Hey guys, welcome to another uh, tea time with Shelton. And um, today we are going to be talking about um, my experience at the Riverside Hospital. As many of you know, Riverside Hospital is currently being um, torn down. And it's a real shame. There's a whole lot of history there with um, so many important people that have been born there, so many important people that have died there, and loved ones and community members that have been born there and died there. So um, this hospital was born, um, born, <laughs> this hospital was built in the 1800s. And um, it, it was really incredible to go through there. It took a very long time for us to do negotiation with um, TPS, who owns the hospital and the property. Um, it took uh, just about a year to get that done. And um, that was because a lot of things were thrown in the middle with um, some other ghost hunters being a, a bit offended that they weren't able to go in there and explore um, and we were pretty much the only ones that at the time were able to go in there since we were doing our documentary. So we had quite a bit of people upset about that, um, which kind of stalled us getting in there for a year. When we finally did get in there, um, and we pulled up to this building, a very old building, and we're staring at it and you can see some of the windows are torn out of it. Um, you can see some of the windows are broken, and you can just notice that nobody has really been in there for such a long time. Um, we pulled up, and we heard people inside this building um, giggling and laughing, um, talking very loudly. So we just assumed that it was teenagers or just kind of, you know people exploring and having a good time, thrill seekers. So um, after quite some time of listening to them being in there, we started kind of circling the hospital, trying to find them. On um, one side of the hospital, we actually saw some human figures running past this window, giggling and laughing, and we were trying to catch up and find out um, which exit they were going to get out of or what window they were going to climb out of. Uh, and we never did see them climb out, but we ended up having to call the Toledo Police Mu um, Museum, Toledo Police Department, and have them come out so that we could make sure the building was safe before we went in. So um, in no time at all, the Toledo Police responded and um, sent two cruisers out with a total of, I believe it was four officers, who went through the building. Um, as they were going through the building, uh, two of the officers seemed a little bit spooked by stuff that was going on inside there. At least that was my opinion and um, what I had noticed. And they told the other two officers that they were leaving. So the other two officers stayed with us and we actually walked with the officers through the remainder of the building trying to see if we could find these people that were running through. Um, we did not find these people anywhere. Uh, we did not find an exit where they could have gone out of. There were very limited areas that they would have been able to get out and we did not see them exit at all. So whether these were actual people running through or maybe we had spot some spirits running around in this building. I don't know. I have no explanation for it. But um, we could not find them. It was very interesting. The officers actually um, had a great time walking through the building with us. And we took them on about a 45-minute tour, kind of walking around, showing them the morgue, showing them different areas of the hospital, the psych ward. Um, things like that. They were very interested in the history. They were very interested in what we were doing. Um, and it was such a pleasure kind of, you know, getting to know them and talking to them. Um, and afterwards, uh, they also asked me to bless and sage them before they return to work and do a prayer of protection on them uh, for while they're at work. So um, that was a really cool experience. Um, 
one I just love our Toledo Police Department. They are just wonderful officers. So thank you to you guys for um, always showing up at our locations and making sure we're safe. Um, after that um, incident, and once all the officers left, um, we got down to business. Um, a lot of us who were going through the building would think that we were seeing shadow figures kind of walking about, kind of peeking around corners. We kept hearing whispering and voices um, a few times that we wondered if it was squatters and we would kind of run around trying to find out um, like where they were. Uh, and we could never find people, but we did constantly hear people talking. Um, we got a lot of EVPs in that location, a lot of Class A EVPs. Um, I think we got like six or seven in the morgue alone. Now, the morgue was really interesting. Of course, you know, um, I sat on the corpse slabs where you put um, the bodies for refrigeration. So I lay down on those. Um, well, I more or less planked on them because I didn't want to like lay straight on it. So I planked on those for quite a while. I think I was on those morgue slabs maybe like 40 minutes by myself or something. And at one point, we had shut the door so that I would be alone inside of it. Um, but I quickly found out that I had to call out for help because I was running out of oxygen. And I, we didn't even think about that. It was airtight and, and shut, so that was a startling moment, realizing that I was starting not to feel well because I wasn't having any oxygen. So thankfully, um, Josh and Tillman heard me and came and opened the door and kept it cracked so at least I could get some air. And then we continued on our investigations. Um, but I did get a, a couple really cool EVPs there, and oh, we also got a lot of really cool... EVPs in um, the psych ward in the isolation room. Um, that was really startling, that one. Um, and I say that because during one of the times when we were doing our uh, B-roll to do some opening credit scenes, um, we were kind of pushing on the door. I was on one side of it inside the isolation room, and the cameras were on the other side. And um, I'm pushing on the door and kicking it and making the door move for the credit scenes to show, you know, some movement of the doors and stuff. Um, not for evidence reasons or anything like that during the show, just the opening credits. And um, it was strange because when I was kicking the door and doing that whole scene, um, it felt like I was getting surrounded by people, like I was had people behind me. And I was anxious, and where I would look up, and there was, like, not much of a ceiling up there anymore. Um, there was an opening up there. I kept feeling like I was seeing something, like, looking now and then. And I kept saying to myself, it's pitch dark in here. I'm doing a creepy scene for opening credits of kicking a door, like somebody's stuck in the isolation room. Um, maybe I'm just creeping myself out, but I kept seeing it. And more interestingly, um, while I'm getting footage from the inside of the door being kicked and kicked, and they're getting footage the outside, um, I was also getting EVPs of screaming on audio. So evidently, I may have not been alone in there. It may not have been in my head. But that was, I think, the only time in that hospital, and I was in that hospital alone quite a bit, um, I even went Facebook Live a couple times alone, walking about. But I think that was the only time that I was actually creeped out and felt like I wasn't supposed to be somewhere, was in that isolation room. That was an intense area, an intense feeling. But that that whole hospital, there are so many um, situations there and, and so many experiences that just too much for me to even explain, to tell you about. Um, I'm really looking forward to that episode coming out. I think everybody would really enjoy that. Um, it's very sad that that 
hospitals being torn down. It's heartbreaking to see it come down, but it's in the name of progress, I suppose. So, okay, well, um, thank you for watching about some of my experience at the uh, Riverside Hospital in Toledo, Ohio. And um, a lot of love to everybody who helped us get in there. And a lot of love to everybody that is very sad to see it go. Um, we're right there with you. Um, it's a shame. But I'm glad that we got in to document the rooms and, and get some of the history down. So it'll forever be somewhere, and not just our hearts. So um, thank you so much, everybody. Um, thank you for watching Tea Time with Shelton. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel on Haunted Toledo. And please like our Facebook page at Haunted Toledo. Uh, have a happy, wonderful day and happy hauntings, guys.